Number one, get your mindset right. We all know there's power in positive thinking, but we also know that positive thinking alone is not going to help you achieve your goals. Did you know that only 8% of people who set goals for themselves actually achieve those goals? That means that 92% of people who set goals for themselves never achieve them. The one thing that this 8% has in common is that they begin with the end in mind. So first they decide their goals. They decide that they're going to achieve those goals and then they work backward from that goal to create a plan to help them achieve it. So you can do the same in your own business and create that goal for yourself and then work backwards from it. The next thing you need to do is create an elevator pitch. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book, but if you don't know, it's an elevator pitch is a statement three to five sentences long that you can recite and practice which will help you concisely tell people who, what, how, and why you are who you are and do what you do. So you can write this out, practice it on your own, and then rehearse it with some friends and family. That way, when somebody asks you or when you're meeting new people and they ask you, hey, what do you do? Or what is hemp paste? You can confidently and concisely explain what they need to know and then leave them curious to know more. This will come in handy later as they follow up with you with more questions or if they if you become top of mind when they have a certain problem that maybe they think you can help them solve. So that's why an elevator pitch is really important. The next thing you need to know is your audience. In marketing, we talk about it as a target market or you may also hear the words buyer persona, ideal customer, all of these things are kind of the same. So I want to encourage you to be specific when naming your target market, like actually sit down and think about your ideal customer. What is he or she interested in? What types of problems do they have? How old are they? How do they spend their time? Where do they spend their time? How do they speak? By thinking through these things, you'll create an image in your mind and your marketing will become a lot easier the more specific you get. So you can start marketing to, to this ideal person by speaking to their certain set of problems, their, their hobbies, their beliefs. All of these things will help you attract that target, that ideal person to you to help you um, reach more people. So I just want to encourage you though that this does not have to mean that you can sell to only this ideal group of customers. It just means that you're going to focus your marketing efforts and in the end save you a lot of money by attracting the right people to sell to. One thing I need you to understand is that hemp paste can help so many people, so many different types of people. But just because hemp paste may be for everyone, does not mean that you're going to be for everyone. You're going to be able to build a customer base of people who resonate with you naturally. These are going to be people who like your styles, your hobby, your beliefs. Maybe they have this, they're in the same cycle of life as you or have the same types of pain. They've tried the same remedies, whatever it is. These are going to be people who resonate with you over somebody else because of your certain and specific life experiences. So create a niche market specific to you so you can focus your marketing efforts easier so that you can create tools for these people. You can talk about their certain problems. You can create free educational um, resources for them and live events. All of these things are made easier by knowing your target market and yourself. So first off, we give you a huge foot forward. We give you a website and your website has a name <laughs> and you can use that name if you'd like to, to brand yourself, create a logo, pick a few colors for your brand, um, your brand colors and base your marketing, all of your marketing off of that. So you want to be really consistent. You want to put your logo 
anywhere you are marketing. You want to use your, your brand colors anywhere. So on print materials, social media posts, um, uh, email blasts. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be hard. Later on, I'm going to give you a free resource that has a ton of information on how you can go about getting a logo, how you can um, go about starting branding online. But for now, just think about like, so for example, if your website is Texas Hemp Paste, then that's a really easy thing. You can already almost see it in your mind what Texas Hemp Paste logo could be. You could have a big Texas star with a hemp leaf behind it, or you can use the colors like navy and crimson and white. Those are very Texas colors. And if you consistently use those things in your branding, then people are going to start recognizing those things and correlate those colors or those that logo to you and your company. We're going to do a little visualization, I guess, a little activity. So I'm going to say two colors and in the chat, you type out what you think the brand I'm, I'm talking about is. If I say the colors red and yellow, what brand do you automatically think of? Anybody, anybody? Oh, Brad Morehouse, Mickey D's. Oh, yep. Yeah, McDonald's. Okay. So without even telling you Think of a brand in the fast food atmosphere. I just said red and yellow, and you guys already thought of McDonald's. That means that McDonald's has done a fantastic job at creating um, a brand image and consistency that makes you resonate. Every time you think of red and yellow, you're thinking of food. <laughs> you're thinking of McDonald's. So you want to do something similar with your brand. Um, don't make it hard. Just pick a few colors and stay consistent with it. 